It is day seven in the courtroom and the fourth day of testimony just wrapped up moments ago. That's where Alec Murdoch, a disbarred low country attorney, is standing trial for the June 2021 murders of his wife, Maggie, and their youngest son, Paul. We continue our live team coverage from Walterboro. We start with Ann McGill and last week uh, we, we heard a lot of things during opening statements. What happened today in court? Well, Raphael, today the state wrapped up the day by going through some tedious cell phone records from a SLED agent. Uh, that SLED agent, Lieutenant Brett Dobb, and those cell phone records from the night of the murders. So last week, the state said that it would provide some records that would show that Alec Murdoch was actually on the scene during the murders, and that's what it's trying to do now. Blair Sable joining us now to explain just how the state is trying to make good on that promise. Blair? Well, and all afternoon we've heard from both experts and law enforcement about those cell phones of Paul, Maggie and Alec Murdoch, but it's yet to become clear how exactly all that information is coming together to make good on that promise. As you said, a variety of witnesses throughout today presented evidence from the chain of custody of the phones to cell phone call, text, even step records uh, recorded on those phones, even detailing how Paul's phone was broken into by quote unquote brute force by a secret service agent. We also heard from the man today who sold Murdoch three 300 blackout rifles, two of which he bought for his sons as gifts for boar hunting. Earlier today during cross-examination, the defense also questioned if any of those firearms we saw presented as evidence yesterday were even related to the murders. Have you ever found the murder weapons? To your knowledge? Objection, Your Honor. That's outside the scope of his knowledge. overruled. Not that I'm aware of, sir. The defense also pointed out that Paul was killed with ammunition meant for waterfowl and only ammunition for dry land animal hunting was found on the property. But lead prosecutor Creighton Waters made a point to bring out and show the jury every single bullet they found on the property during their investigation that matched the types that had hit Paul. And uh, towards the end of the afternoon or rather right after lunch, the defense did try to make a quick motion to exclude Paul's phone as evidence of citing concerns about the chain of custody and the fact that all the names on those lists would not be called to the stand. It was denied. And all right, Blair, thank you very much. Now, today, the uh, the uh, defense continued to try to poke holes in the state's story and try to weaken its testimony. And it wanted to target um, investigations by law enforcement that were conducted the night of and the days after Paul and Maggie's murder. Cameron Bopp joining us now live. Cameron, the defense continued to make claims that the investigations into Alec Murdoch's whereabouts the night of the murders, that those weren't done thoroughly enough. And, Anne, you wouldn't catch this unless you were in the courtroom, but several members of Murdoch's family were in the gallery today, including his surviving son, Buster, and his sister, Lynn. Now, as the defense made claims that sled agents didn't conduct thorough enough investigations, both Lynn and Buster shook their heads, appearing to disapprove of the state's alleged actions, or in this case, inactions. Now, since the night of the murders, Murdoch has held his claim that he was visiting his elderly mother about 20 minutes away in Varnville. Sled agent Jeff Croft, who took the stand both yesterday and today, says that in murder investigations, they start with a small circle of suspects. And at the crime scene when authorities arrived on June 7, 2021, the suspect circle was small, consisting of only Maggie, Paul, and Alec. Now, of course, that circle grew bigger as people of interest were questioned, but the defense questioned in court today, if Murdoch was a suspect from night one, why didn't SLED conduct a search of his mother's property, where he claims he was during the murders? Now, why did they not look for bloody clothes or evidence at that property? That's when I caught Buster shaking his head side to side. Meanwhile, Murdoch's sister Lynn did the same thing after Croft messed up a time as he was testifying about the investigations. The family appears to disagree with either something the defense claims the state did or testified about to the court. Now, yesterday we saw both Buster and Murdoch's brother, John Marvin, cry in court as we watched a playback interview of Murdoch uh, crying in that video and then consequently crying in court. So no tears today, but of course, tomorrow could be a different story as the state calls forward more witnesses who surely have more evidence. Man. 
All right, Cameron, thank you. And I believe we heard from about five witnesses today. The state will continue calling witnesses tomorrow when court resumes at 930 in the morning. Reporting live from the Colladin County Courthouse in Walterboro, Anne McGill, Live 5 News. Thank you, Anne and team. Of course, you don't have to miss any of the coverage. You can tune into Live 5 News daily and make sure to download the Live 5 News app.